28 field goals, 22 assists. That's the narrative of the night for me. Uh, we talked about moving the ball more. We talked about scoring off cuts, passes, making other people better. And that's, that's what we got on the offensive end. Defensively, boy, between Flowers hitting bombs and Dugan getting us pretty good inside, it, it's, I haven't said this in a while. We did just enough defensively to get by tonight. Uh, our offense actually pulled us out of the fire. So I know we can defend. We've defended a good chunk of the year. Uh, this is encouraging from that standpoint because I, I still think that's our strength. Uh, shot allocation, ball got moved around. Uh, we hit shots because they were good shots. It was a good team win tonight. Any questions? What can you tell us about James? James appears to have an Achilles tear. I don't, I'm not a doctor, but when there's a gap in where your Achilles tendon should be, I'm saying there's probably an issue there structurally. That would obviously take him out for the season. I'm crushed for the kid. Uh, a, he really had it rolling tonight, but B, he's, he's gone through so much to put himself out on that court, so many hours of rehab, so many hours of that. It's, it's just, it's hard. The only, the only thing I, I told him that he could take solace in is that, you know, he's in school to be a doctor. He's working with fruit flies to try to f find a cure for Alzheimer's. He's got some stuff going on in his life. and. The best things that he does in life will be long after the basketball has been put away and he can focus on that a little bit now and then we'll see what the future holds for him. But it, again, just pit in my stomach for the kid. And it's ironic that he probably was playing the best game of his career when it happened. Did it take your, your guys a while to process that? Your second half start looked like they were thinking about something else. Yeah, two lazy post feeds. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what it was, but it was very clear to everybody in the locker room that he was done for the year. There's no question about that. I would hope we're mentally tougher than that to let that explain a really awful start to the second half. After what had been probably our best 14 minutes of basketball after spotting them 14 to start the game. Was there a catalyst that The, the catalyst really was just being stubborn enough to not change. It would have been easier to deviate when you're down 15-1, look up the scoreboard and say, you know. But we didn't. We, we continued running the same stuff. Uh, again, ball reversals, hard cuts, things like that are things that, well, it propelled us to 50% shooting for the first time in quite some time tonight. Well, I definitely filibustered him. Uh, clocked in pretty, pretty heavy to the point where we had to adjust practice uh, on the tail end so we could get guys out of here. But uh, I've got a vision for how this team can play and be successful on offense. We just need to stick to it. And after the Toledo game, we had so many four shots. Talking to Jason Carter about uh, playing off the move a little bit more so teams can't key on them as much. Uh, it's one thing to come into a game saying you're going to double from here, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, but if you move the pieces around continually, it's harder to get to those, those doubles uh, and raids. So I've, you know, I've seen it in practice, again, fairly frequently, and then we get into games and we just kind of short circuit offensively and maybe try to do a little too much individually. Not just one guy, but literally everybody from, from Gavin to TK to Jason, trying to do things outside of their 
comfort zone to make it work for us. And sometimes if you just don't squeeze it so tight and let your teammates make you better, it works. Uh, do you feel that they weren't playing the football plan? No, I, I, I know they're buying the plan because they're doing it every day in practice. They were just squeezing the life out of it in a game, trying to, again, make that play. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to help us out. And again, I don't think that comes from a selfish place. I don't think it's, it's guys making any statement other than I really want to help our team win. And again, it takes, sometimes it takes the coach, somebody down on the floor to say, step back, look at this, look at what it looks like. We can't be successful doing it this way. We've got to do it the way we do it in practice every day. We're going to try to start a two-game win streak. That's what I know. I mean, that's, that's, I'll keep it that simple. Uh, but yeah, I'd just as soon not lose another two games after a win. Not my ideal way to spend a post-victory game. Yep. 12 turnovers, 22 assists. I mean, I'm literally, this is, that looks a lot better than what I've been staring at at the end of games. Well, I, I told the guys before the game, I said, this isn't a theory that I'm trying out on you guys. This will work if we do it. I mean, it's literally that simple. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hoping this is the magic bullet. You saw it on tape. You've seen it in practice. This will work for you. Why we deviate from that, I have no idea. But uh, it, it, was, it was nice to see, and again, to have it happen after you start out with a 15-1 burger at the beginning of the game, uh, that's a group of guys that they believed it. They clearly believed it. He is. He's a very smart, cerebral player. He also has as good a court vision as I've been around, period. And uh, doesn't get rattled. Uh, but the most important thing that he brings to the table is he, he makes other people better. And uh, there's no question that, that part of our struggles Offensively, the last three quarters before this, or three halves before this game, had to do directly with him not being on the floor. Uh, how happy are you on the sidelines when you see that you can really trust that person more? And when obviously at halftime you're not going to focus on it so much. Like we're focusing on how to keep going back at that moment. But well, the good news is is that if you're going to fall down 15-1, the best time of the game to do it is right out of the gate. You've got more time to go. I again based on how we had practiced offensively. What I, what I didn't anticipate is, is Flowers going on that. I mean, we have played some great guards. That was the most impressive performance I've seen this year offensively. And then uh, obviously, Whitting can cause us some issues too. Now, Dugan can cause us some problems too. Uh, but they, yeah, I mean, Flowers, a couple of them that he hit, I thought we might have fouled him on. That's how tightly he was guarded. I mean, it was, I was more worried about them blowing the whistle and I was the ball going in and the next thing you know it's going in. But it was it was neat because the the guys know the job that Antonio's done all year long against elite guards throughout the nation and they're just saying, All right, hey it's okay if he gets a step by you. We got your back. Just don't let him settle into that three and easier said than done. But we were, at one point he was six for six from three. He ended up six for eight, so we got him to miss two at the end, I guess. Your, your closing lineup was, was different than your closing lineup usually all season long. Is that a one game one off or is that a sign of things to come? Oh, I, I guess I'm not static in anything right now. Uh, I, played the, I was playing the guys out there that were playing really, really well. That was it. And, uh, 
I, I had Antonio and TK both with four fouls. That affected my thinking some. Uh, but the offense was working really, really well with Jay out there at the point, and I didn't, I just didn't want to change that. Uh, so, so we rode that out. But uh, when when you have a team that's been struggling offensively, and you've got a group that's figuring out on the offensive end, it behooves you to run them a little bit more and, and give them a little more tick. Next possession, that's, that's all you can do. And again, anybody that says that, that seeing James go down at that moment doesn't affect them is just lying to you. Even the most cold-hearted son of a gun in the world would be like, that's really too bad for the kid. Uh, but it happens and I mean, yesterday, my son learned a valuable lesson after going head first into a tree while he was sledding. Uh, lessons are taught in all kinds of different ways. And uh, this is a life lesson for him, for all of us. It's a great reminder to, for his teammates to understand how lucky they are to, to get to play. And that'll definitely be hit upon. But again, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I don't feel very good for the kid. I, I, that's tough. Do you know? Like, yeah. When Hawkins leaves the bench to go out and check on him. He, he, he said to me, he goes, it's Achilles. And then we, we looked at it. And at first, you couldn't really see the damage. But when I went at halftime, I don't need a doctor to tell me what went on there. It's, again, it's just very, very obvious. Uh, and so I guess technically we probably don't have the diagnosis yet, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I, I've, had, I've had kids do that before, and it's a, again, I don't, I don't need a medical degree to know what happened there. <laughs> 